welcome back welcome back guys so we're back here with the jeep and today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be handling the cooling system on this thing so what i got here this is a radiator made specifically for the jeep yj for ls swap so this is made by mishimoto uh it's uh i believe a dual core radiator so it should be plenty enough to get it cool also got an electric fan that I ordered online for this thing as well that is going to end up getting wired up. That's going to uh, go, ahead and go ahead and get it put on. And then I'll probably have in a separate video where I'm doing the wiring on the Jeep of uh, wiring all that stuff up. Uh, but today we're going to get this on, get the hoses and stuff on. Uh, I'm going to be reusing the upper radiator hose from the Silverado and the lower radiator hose. And I'm just uh, cut them because it looks like they're going to need to be shortened up to fit. Also, I am going to show you, uh, here, I'll go ahead and actually show you now. So, a lot of these LS motors, they have a steam line coming out top of the heads to evacuate air out so they, they don't run into overheating issues. Uh, Mishimoto makes one. I got this one from Glow Shift. Uh, basically, I had to shorten up our radiator hose anyway, so I'm going to cut it in half and butt it together on each side of this with some hose clamps. And it comes with a MPT port there for the screw in the little barb fitting. And you can actually just slide that steam line on there and that lets it evacuate air, air out the top of the engine over into the radiator. So you, make, you wanna make sure that it's actually going to the outlet side and actually able to get it out into the radiator. Um, but yeah, um, a little bit behind that GM, uh, you notice that the thermostat's down low on the water pump of the engine. So that's why they have those on the LS motors is because the thermostat is not the actual highest point in the engine to be able to get the air out. So that's why they do that on these LS motors. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this radiator slapped in. I'm gonna put it on the time lapse and let y'all go along with me and watch. So let's go on ahead and get that knocked out. All right, so again, I said there, that's gonna be the stock lower radiator hose for the Silverado. Just basically cut it, shorten it up, and hook it onto the radiator. Uh, again, stock upper radiator hose for the Silverado. It's just gonna run right on across the top. Got this little anti-abrasive sleeve here. And then you have, uh, steam port which goes right here i gotta tighten those up still and it runs around and hooks right into the radiator there so next part i got here for it is going to be a max line performance electric cooling fan uh just something i got straight off of ebay again as usual i have all the links in the description for the stuff i'm using uh, so 16 inch fan supposed to move about 3000 CFM which should be more than enough to keep this cool again this is just a little 4.8 liter just he's mainly looking for drivability and fuel mileage out of this Jeep and it was cheaper than fixing the transmission that was in it so we're gonna go ahead and walk through getting this put on uh, so, so comes with the fan just a 12 volt 120 watt fan a little cricket in there so that's going to go on there i'm going to use it as a pull style i'm going to have it pulled through the radiator it's also going to come with all the little mountain supplies and stuff you need so 
got little tabs that you push through the fins of the radiator, basically like a fancy version of a zip, zip tie. You put these little things on the back of it, which will lock it in. And then you got the little legs that go on the shroud itself. So again, we'll go ahead and put it on time lapse. I'll show you how I'm putting all this stuff together. So we got the little legs that come with it in the kit. What you got here? You got these little slots here, and they're just going slide right in, just like that. So now you got the legs on there. I'm going ahead. Slide it in, pop it in place. so that the wire is down to the passenger side. All right. Now you're gonna take these and all you're gonna do, get it right where I want. Stick it here through the leg, out to the front. Just like that. Go around, do all four legs. Now we're gonna to go to the front. You see where it's sticking out through the fin right there. Kit comes with these little foam pads and uh, little lockers on it like. It. So again, try to do this with one hand. We're gonna take foam pad and just stick it on there take the lock washer on there and put it on I'm gonna have to set the phone down real quick uh, just I need a second hand So it slid on down there, got the little foam pad to protect the radiator there. And we got a little compression on the spring. It's not, I could pull it super tight, but I don't really see a need to. That's plenty enough tension for what I'm trying to do. Kind of defeats the purpose if you take all uh, the spring out of the spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other three and then I'll be back with you. All right, so that's basically going to wrap it up. Uh, the only thing I hadn't shown in the video is I do, this radiator does have an internal trans cooler. I got the hard lines down there. I just got to trim them back a little bit. That way it doesn't come out directly underneath the radiator. And then I'm probably going to put my pipe little tubing bender tool on it, bend them up to come right up alongside the radiator here. And then I used a rubber line clamp them down on there and now they handle the cooler but now i got uh the harness coming out down here for radiator so run back there i'm gonna end up running uh the harness through the firewall i got a bunch of wires right there that I, i've been going through the stuff on the inside getting it all to work i'm gonna clean it all up and reloom all that but uh no radiators all mounted up electric fans on ready to be wired up um upper hoses lower radiator hose and everything's on here she's ready to go uh, uh overflow line runs over here uh also if you are not using the silverado's overflow tank uh you can just use a second of just a regular heater hose to run for the heater output since we are actually having the cap and overflow come out the top of the radiator here so uh, that's going to be it for this video. That's 
gonna be how basically you're gonna handle the cooling system on your LS swap. Uh, it should be pretty similar for other vehicles, just maybe a different size radiator and stuff like that. But what as common as LS swap says, I'm sure someone makes a radiator, this uh, direct swap in for doing an LS. So thank you guys again for watching. As again, all the parts that I use in this video will be down in the description below if you are looking for these. Um, go on, maybe start here on the wiring. Either I might start tomorrow. If not, I'll be doing it next time I'm off work. And then maybe we can get the first fire up done on this thing. Also, still got to do the shifter in the floor and also install the full drive floor shifter as well. And then my buddy that owns the Jeep, he's going to take it and have a drive shaft made and an exhaust done up on it. But hopefully here soon we'll be getting you all the first fire up of it. And uh, stay tuned, check that out. Until then, stay tuned like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.